Hello. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the stages of grief and what that looks like for someone who's been betrayed. And in the previous videos, we talked about betrayal trauma and what that looks like for someone whose spouse is sexually addicted. Now, you might notice in these videos that I don't talk a lot about sexual addiction. And the reason is because there are so many resources and supports out there for people who do suffer from a sexual addiction. And there's not so many supports for folks who have been impacted by it. And if you feel like doing research or looking for that kind of um, support, please feel free and go ahead. This video, these, these videos and this video is for you and the support for you. So in the past videos, we've talked a lot about betrayal trauma, what that looks like and how you might be able to create safety for yourself. My encouragement to you is to continue to do that really important and really hard work. And while you're creating safety for yourself, you might be experiencing what we call the stages of grief. No one died. Why would someone be experiencing stages of grief? Well, the reality is the relationship, as you might have known it, feels dead. Feels like there's been a huge loss. And it's really normal to be going through these different stages of grief, specifically in the lens of betrayal trauma. Thinking about the first stage of grief, it's shock and denial. And I think that there's a lot of judgment and shame wrapped up in the term denial. You know, we talk a lot about, oh, they're in denial, and um, we see it a lot in TV shows and media. And the reality is that denial actually serves a purpose. It insulates us from the pain of the knowing. It can be sometimes too much to fully absorb all the truth of your partner's sexual addiction. And by being in denial, it can help us maybe move through and get to a place that we need to be before processing the rest. Now, living in denial, is that a healthy place to, to kind of engage with all the time? I'm gonna say probably not, because it prevents us from feeling um, what, what we're experiencing. It prevents us from processing and healing and that it's also really normal. The next stage in the stage of grief is um, anger, right? And this is something I see a lot in my offices is just a real pain. And that's what anger is, is a response to um, a real or um, kind of intuitively imagined sense of, of hurt and betrayal. Anger tells us that, no, this is not okay. So for a lot of people who've been impacted by their partner's sexual addiction, they are livid. There's so much anger and rage. And again, that is a normal, natural response and it can be temporary. In fact, it needs to be in order to keep moving through this process. So anger can feel sometimes empowering and um, even a sense of, of control. And that can be okay, again, not a place where we wanna live, not a place where we wanna operate because it prevents us from feeling, it prevents us from being vulnerable and it can prevent us from healing. So that's the second stage, anger. Then the third stage is bargaining. So sometimes this can be a tricky stage to understand. Bargaining is about trying to really get a handle on your reality. Um, sometimes that can look like questions in my office such as, you know, why him? How did this happen? What could have changed? What could have I done differently as a partner that would have totally, you know, made this a different experience for me? And often the answer is, unfortunately, nothing. Um, one of the things that makes sex addiction different than maybe just one affair or two affairs is that regardless of who the individual is in a relationship with, they're going to have a sex addiction. Um, that it existed often long before you engaged with them and um, if you had left them, often long afterwards as well. So this idea of bargaining, really trying to understand, it can be helpful. This is where we get information. Again, this is a place where we can feel empowered and knowing too that this is an experience that unfortunately we cannot bargain our way out of. Which leads us to the next stage is sorrow. And this one's a tough one because it's coming close to that place of acceptance 
and really just taking note of the impact of the betrayal trauma. Noticing just how much you have lost. Sometimes it's not even the loss of the relationship that's painful, it's the loss of the relationship with yourself. Not feeling like you can trust yourself, not knowing what your realities are, and that can, that can be really devastating. It's also important to note at this, this point that in all of these stages, we can jump around. Um, we can feel that deep sorrow and then jump back to the anger. We can feel just like this idea of bargaining and then move back to the shock and denial. And that's okay. This isn't a linear healing process. That means it's not a step-by-step -step guide. You know, there's lots of things to the process, the loss about. And this is, you know, this is sort of just a general idea, an outlook of what this looks like. Then the final stage is acceptance and the idea of really kind of radically accepting the reality as it is, compassionately accepting what's happening for yourself and what's happening in the relationship. Does this make the, the betrayal okay or um, anything hurt less? Absolutely not. It's the idea of though processing through that loss. So that's what the stages of grief can look like. And again, this is not a linear process um, and that it's okay to jump from one stage to the next and that it's really normal and healthy to go through this process. So again, we can move closer and closer to healing. Mm -hmm.